Yeah. Well, we name our, I'm just, we name our private lenders on the more on the insurance policy as a mortgagee, just like a bank. And we name them on the title policy as an assured. Um, again, how they protected that conservative loan to value. And we're not borrowing unsecured money. They're going to get their own promissory note, their own trust of collateralizing that note. Welcome to the Next Level Income Show, where it's our goal to take your income, your investments, and your life to the next level. I'm your host, Chris Larson. If you haven't yet, get a copy of our book for free at our website, nextlevelincome.com. That's www.nextlevelincome.com. Just click on the book link, and I'll even send you a copy if you put your address in. On today's show, we have Jay Connor. Jay has been buying and selling houses since 2003 in a town of only 40,000 people with profits now averaging $78,000 per deal. His passion is motivating and teaching other real estate investors how to raise private money without ever asking for that money. And as a result, Jay has consulted one-on-one -on -one with over 2,000 real estate investors. In addition, Jay is a two-time national best-selling author and a past president of Business Networking International. He and his wife, Carol Joy, reside in Moorhead City, North Carolina, just on the other side of the state from me. And whether you are looking Looking to raise private money for your own deals or just want to understand the questions and the process that goes on behind this, you're going to want to listen to this show. Jay, welcome to the Next Level Income Show. Oh my lands, Chris. I'm so excited to be here because after all, what I'm so passionate about is private money because private money has made more of an impact in mine and my wife's real estate investing business than anything else that we've done. Yeah, well, I'm excited to talk about it. And shoot, we're we're practically neighbors in the grand scheme of things. You're you're on the other side of uh, North Carolina here. Um, I'm up in the mountains, and you're at the beach. So this will be uh, here. We are connecting via technology, but this will be this will be a lot of fun here for anybody that's uh, around the world, but also in North Carolina as well. I love it. I love yeah. it. Yeah. So Jay, I, I shared a little bit about your background with the audience in the intro, but I'd love for you to share a little bit about more share a little more with the audience about how you got into real estate, some of your background, even before that. Sure. Well, I was actually raised by in the mobile home business or manufactured housing business. My yeah. dad, Wallace Connor, who by the way, just turned 90 years old, had a big old birthday party for him down here at Orange city, Atlantic beach. Anyway, he was in the mobile home manufactured housing business. And in fact, uh, at one time, he was the, his company was the largest retailer of manufactured homes in the nation. Wow. And so I grew up being around helping people or watching my father and his company help people own a home and in the affordable housing space. Well, in 2000, the early 2000s, Wall Street fell out of her with that industry and all the financing pretty much went away for that product. And so if you don't have financing for the product, obviously you're pretty much out of business. Yeah. Yeah. So I knew if I ever got out of mobile homes and single family houses, I wanted to get into single family homes. I wanted to be a flipper. I wanted to be a flipper before uh, HGTV even had the flipping shows and before it was like all sexy and stuff. So in 2003, uh, my wife and I, we did our first deal that, uh, right here in Moorhead City, North Carolina. We only did three houses that year. You know, we bought the properties, fixed them up really, really nice, and then sold them for retail. Well, something happened, Chris. Something happened. And it's been experienced that the growth takes place in the valley, right? The big turnarounds mm -hmm. take place, wow. not when you're on yeah. top of the mountain. Yeah, love and that. So yeah. I remember it like yesterday, Chris. In fact, you know, you may find it hard to believe, Chris, but we still have handsets and cords here. What is that? And, uh, My son North would North say, North. what is that? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, from 2003 to 2009, I relied on the local bank to yeah. fund my deals. That's all easy. I knew. Yeah. Easy to get money then too. It was very easy. Oh my land. Are you kidding? <laughs> In 2003, when we started, I had a $250,000 unsecured, unsecured line of credit, uh, at the local bank here. So that, I mean, I'd never heard of hard money lending. I'd, yeah. I'd never heard of that way to get deals funded. I mean, after all, I'm sort of living underneath a rock, you know, here in Eastern North Carolina, but I picked up my phone in January, 2009. Now I had been doing this business yeah. for six years, doing the business with the same banker, the same bank. And so I picked up my phone and I called my banker. His name was Steve. 
And I told him about these two houses that I had under contract, you know, to purchase. Yeah. And Steve and I had had this conversation, Chris, many, many, many times. Well, I learned like that on that conversation that my line of credit had been shut down with no notice. And yeah. I said, Steve, what do you mean my line of credit is shut down? It'd been nice to know that before I got these houses under contract. And he says, uh, Jay, don't you know there's a global financial crisis going on right now? I said, no, but now you just gave me a financial crisis because yeah. I don't have any way to fund these deals. So I hung up the phone and then I thought to myself, Chris, for a minute, who here's a writer downer. When you problem, here's the, here's the question to ask yourself, who do I know to help me with my problem? And by the way, these people are going around saying it was an opportunity. I want to throw up. I didn't have an opportunity. I had a problem at the time. So I picked up the phone and I called my buddy, Jeff, who lived in Greensboro, North Carolina at the time he was investing in single family houses. I told him what had happened. He says, well, welcome to the club, Jay. I said, what club? He said, the club of losing your line of credit. They cut yeah. me off last week. I yeah. said, well, how are you going to get your deals funded? He says, well, you ever heard of private money? I said, no. Yeah. He said, you ever heard of self directed IRAs? And I said, no. Well, I studied that very, very quickly. And I raised $2,150,000 in less than 90 days. Wow. So guess what? My banker did me a favor, yeah. right? By cutting me off. Cause then I had to find a better and quicker way to get funding for my deals. So anytime that you've got a challenge and the formula is E plus R equals O. And that stands for the event. The E is the event. R is your response to that event. And the O is the outcome that you experience. Love that. Unfortunately, Chris, most people walking around live, with, live under a different formula. They live with E equals O. Whatever the event is that happens dictates and determines your outcome. But guess no what? way. You may not have any, anything to do with the event that happened in your life. I didn't have anything to do, do with, you know, being cut off from the, from the bank and losing my, that, that was not me. Right. But. I've got 100% choice as to right. how I want to respond to whatever right. happens. Therefore, it's your response that determines the outcome. And what a big blessing I love that. in disguise. So I love anyway, that. That's how I started. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that is a great story. And look, I was part of that club too. You know, all our lines of credit, secured lines of credit on our properties went away. Bank said, sorry. No more. Sorry. No more. Sorry. It's like, wait, we've always paid on time. We have terrific credit. We have more equity than we've ever had. It was, it was crazy. So it's like, what do you, you know, what do you do? I remember going back and thinking like, what, what is going on here? This is, you know, I never seen anything like it, obviously. Um, cause I, I had not been through other real estate cycles. You know, now I, now I've studied history and, and seen these things and you can go back in time and say, Oh, this is, you know, this isn't the first time this has happened, nor will it be the last time. Um, but I love that. You know, if, if you're listening to this show, chances are you're not the type of person that Jay talked about where you let events occur and you let that outcome determine your fate. You're, you're a person that has a response that takes action to determine your fate. Um, you know, we had a similar story, Jay, my wife and I were building, uh, spec homes. So we bought mm. a piece of property 2012, you know, go to a bank bank says, Nope, we don't, we don't do spec homes. So we made a list of every bank in the region. My wife called three dozen banks and wow. I forget it was, I think it was 34 exactly. And what was, what was wild is there was one bank left and she called that bank. It was called Integra at the time. Now they're, you know, a couple acquisitions later, they're part of first citizens bank. And she called that last bank on the list and they said, we just started lending on spec homes last month. So, wow. you know, again, but that took that massive action. She didn't say, oh, we can't do it. My wife's a persistent, some would say stubborn person. I might be the <laughs> one that says that. Um, but those things can really, really help out with that. But let's, let's back up a little bit, Jay. So um, I want to define some things for the audience. So first off, um, what is, let's talk about hard money, hard money lending. Like what is that for those that haven't heard that before? Sure. Well, most of the time, and I'm glad you asked this question, Chris, cause a lot of times, uh, private money and hard money are like interchangeable, but the way I do the business, they're not interchangeable. By the way, I say establish as many relationships with as many lenders and people as you can. Yeah. Money lenders. Most of the time is a broker of money. 
And what a hard money lender will do, and I've got a lot of friends that are hard money lenders, they establish a fund and they will raise money from individuals, private lenders, to invest in their fund. And uh, then the hard money lender or broker will then lend that money out to the real estate investor or entrepreneur, the borrower of that real estate. And um, you know, some hard money lenders really make most of their money off of the origination fees. Uh, some hard money lenders will borrow at a lower amount from the private lender and charge a higher interest rate. So that's, you know, there's all that's actually stuff. exactly what we do with our debt fund. We, you know, we, we, we quote unquote, borrow money from our investors and, you know, we pay them, a, a, a um, not a guaranteed, but a steady return. Mm -hmm. And then we originate the loans. We go out and look for lender or um, borrowers that want to do that. They pay us an origination fee. They pay us a little bit of spread on top of that. And, you know, we make we, our, our money is made on the origination fee and that spread that we make um, by taking the, uh, well, taking the risk and, and mm -hmm. the operations as well. So this is what you're doing is actually slightly different than that. Yes. So what I'm doing is I am going directly to the individuals that, that would invest in a uh, hard money fund yep. and I'm, I'm doing So there's no middle person involved, yep. right? Yep. Um, hard money broke sort of like a, a middle person. And what I'm doing is I'm raising money directly from individuals. Mm -hmm. Uh, right now I've got 47 individuals that are loaning us money on our deals. Uh, and by the way, if you're interested in raising your own money, of course, I guess we should talk about the differences, but yeah. if you're interested in raising uh, your own money, then here's the thing. When I was borrowing money from the bank, a whole, it was a whole different um, type relationship. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is, you know, <laughs> I'd go to the bank for six years and get on my hands and knees and put my hands underneath my chin and say, please fund my deal. Please fund my deal. And, you know, have to show returns and verification of income and oh, yeah. Everything. My credit score. Bend and over. Kind of yeah. <laughs> turn a flashlight on. It's crazy, right? <laughs> so, you know, the traditional way to borrow money is you ask, yeah. right? You apply. Yeah. Yeah. The way I do it, there is no asking. There is an application. You're already approved. So uh, people, uh, people ask me all the time, I say, Jay, come on, give me a break. How in the world have you got eight and a half million dollars that you on, you know, house to house, project to project, and you don't ask for money. Well, here's the secret. Instead of asking for a mortgage, I put on my private lender teacher hat and I just start teaching people that I have connections with. And I teach them about my private lending program as to how they can earn high rates of return safely and securely. So that's what I did those first nine days when I lost my line of credit back in 2009 is first of all, I put my program together, right? Mm -hmm. Which by yep. the way, I got the whole program in my book that we'll talk about, but yeah, and we're going to have, uh, we will have a link in the show note for that too. So if you're, if you're listening, stay tuned. Yeah. So I just started teaching people, well, here's how you can earn high rates of return safely and securely. If you're not happy with what your investments are doing for you now. Right. And so what's my interest rate that I'm going to pay? Uh, so for example, I've been paying the same interest rate, um, since 2009 and I pay them, I pay every lender the same thing. So teach them the interest rate, the, the length of the note, how they can get their money back in case of an emergency and et cetera. So once they say, well, I like, you know, I like that program. I don't have to ask them. Remember I'm teaching, I'm teaching. Right. I'm just share. I'm just sharing what I do. And if, if they're interested, that's fantastic. If they've got retirement funds, I'll introduce them to the self-directed IRA company that I recommend. And, um, and so then I give them a, when it's time for, I've never pitched a deal, Chris, I've never pitched a deal in my life since 2009. It's a Jay. Well, how are you getting if you're not pitching your deal? Well, listen, we separate the conversation between you're interested in the program mm -hmm. and now I've got a deal for you to fund. So when I've got a deal from the fund, they've already told me how much they got. They're ready to go. Right. Yeah. So I call them with the good news phone call. I call them up. I say, I got great news. I can now put your money to work. 
I got a house in Newport with an after repaired value of $200,000. The funding required for the deal is 150. I know they got 150. They already told me and closing is next Wednesday. You need to have your funds wired to my real estate attorney by next Tuesday. I'm, I don't ask them want to do the deal. That's the most stupid question in the world. I can ask them. Of course they want to do the deal because they're waiting on the phone call. And, and, and then yeah. I'll make this point and turn it back to you, Chris. If you have shared with someone how someone can make high rates of return safely and securely and you've told them about self-directed IRAs and they have moved a portion or all mm -hmm. of their retirement funds yep. over to the self-directed IRA company that uh, that I recommended I'm ethically bound to put their money to work because they're not making any money they're just sitting that there in account just, yeah it's just sitting there yeah. So some people may be surprised to hear this. I know we've talked about this multiple times on the show over the years, but a self-directed IRA, and, and you can you can jump in here, Jay, is when you take your money, you put it with uh, a custodian who then allows you to direct those funds as you see fit to invest those as you want. You can you can buy precious metals with those funds. You can invest in real estate deals like syndications, but you can also lend your money out. Now you can't self-deal, right? Is that right, Jay? Are you a high income business owner or professional earning two, 300,000 or even more a year, but still feel like you're living paycheck to paycheck? Are you comfortable working until you're 65 or 70 to retire? Or do you want to achieve financial independence and live life on your own terms? You could join myself and Matt Four and learn how we both became financially independent in our early 30s. We will teach you how to make, keep, and grow your money, teaching you strategies to maximize your earnings, keep your income that you've earned through tax strategy and legal structures, and ultimately teach you how to grow it by determining your personal investing strategy, as well as teach you how to analyze investments so you can grow your passive income to the point to live life on your own terms. Our coaching clients reliably do this in seven years or less. To learn more, check out our coaching program at nextlevelincome.com forward slash coaching. That's nextlevelincome.com forward slash coaching. Yes, yeah, you cannot self-deal or self-direct. In other words, yeah. you can't borrow. Now, you're, when you move your retirement funds to a self-directed <laughs> company, yeah. you can take that money and you can go buy a house mm -hmm. or invest in, you know, Chris's fund or whatever, but you cannot borrow from your uh, self-directed IRA account yeah. for the deal that you're that you're going to go for your own deal, in. yeah, for your, your own, own deal or um or a deal with somebody that you're you're directly related to. Yeah, um, so is, it's is vertical. Yeah, it's vertical yeah. and then it's parallel. You yeah. can't loan money uh, to a a a a vertical relationship. You can't yeah. loan money to a parent, a grandparent. You can't loan money yeah. to yourself. Yeah. You can't loan money to your children. You can't loan money to your grandchildren. But you can loan money to brothers, sisters, cousins, Friends. aunts, and yeah. uncles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love that step. Like I got a stepfather. We're not, we're not related. Um, you know, legally do that as well. So yeah, there's a lot of flexibility with that. So it's, it's really cool. So if you're looking for money, you're like, oh, I like this idea. I don't have a bunch of cash sitting around look into a self-directed IRA. If you need custodians, um, reach out, send us an email at podcast at nextlevelincome.com and just say, I'm looking for some self-directed custodian options and we can we can share some with you out there. Um, so Jay, if if people, I know they can they can check out your course and they're going to share a little bit more about that. But if, if I'm going to lend money, if I'm going to become a private lender, um, you, let's talk about some of the projects that you do. You kind of alluded to what they are. And then I'd like to know what are some of the questions that a lender should be asking? Absolutely. So first of all, the, the overall question is, all right, tell me about some of your deals that have gone sideways. Great question. And, you, and have not, and have not turned out the way you intended. Yeah. And if, and, and, and if the, if, if, if your protective borrower cannot tell you a horror story, they're lying <laughs> <laughs> or they're just getting started or they're just getting started. I mean, yeah. I want, I want to hear about, I mean, shoot, I've rehabbed over 500 houses, over Love 500 it. houses. And not one of them have ever come in on budget. Not one has come in on budget. I've had them come in close. I've had them come in under most of the time they come yeah. in over. Well, for that reason, that's we like to say the pro form is always wrong. <laughs> exactly. You know, 
And so it's like, that's why we don't borrow more than 75% of the after repaired value. So the question is, another question that you'd want to ask the operator, the real estate entrepreneur that's going to be the borrower is, well, what's the maximum loan to value? How much equity cushion are you going to, are you going to give me in this deal? Okay. So let's, before we go through that, because this is, I think, you know, you said after repair value, some people, I was actually at the gym this morning and um, one of my fellow uh, real estate investors that goes there, she said, ARV. So, yeah, R, all right. R. So yeah, ARV. So, okay. So let's say um, we have a home that if it was, you know, in, in perfect condition and goes out on the retail market, let's say um, it may be worth $400,000. Okay. When you go and you find a, a home, Jay, and you put it under contract, let's say it's going to sell for $400,000. What are you typically paying for a home like that? Well, I'll give you a perfect example. I just Wonderful. closed on a house last week. Okay. The ARV, the after repaired. By the way, here's the definition of after repaired value in my world. Everything looks and smells brand new. Perfect. Everything. I mean, yep. The, the ARV in my world is this house could be in Southern living magazine. All right. Love it. Yeah. All exterior interior. Anyway. So I closed on this house, uh, right here on a rental street in Moorhead city last week, the after repaired value, $550,000. Perfect. 550. I bought it for 325. Okay. And so, so the first question we may ask is, how do you buy an after repaired value house of five fifty for three hundred twenty five thousand dollars? Well, first of all, yeah. all these properties are distressed to some degree, right? right. And, and 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 need at least some fix up. So, uh, but but secondly, this was an inherited property, and the person that inherited the property lives three hours away and has no personal emotional connection to this property yeah. at all. Yeah. So they just want to cash out and be done. Yeah. And so the actual rehab on this property is right at $50,000. So this is not a big, huge, you know, rehab. So I could have borrowed more money than I intended. I mean, th th yeah. than I did, but bought it for 325. So we're looking at 50, it always costs more, right? And you got closing costs and all that stuff. So I only borrowed $400,000 from my okay. private lender. And so there, so if I rehab this house, then there's going to be, I mean, that's a big equity right there between what you borrowed at 400 and you're going to sell it for 550. Now, yeah, so you're, yeah. So you're borrowing under, under 75%. So between 70 and 75% oh, yeah. of the after, after repaired value. That's right. Now, if you are a private lender, uh, you better know your borrower very well. I mean, there's a, there's a five letter word in this, in this relationship that starts with a T and that's called trust. So, you know, if you're lending the money, you want to be passive. You know, yeah. you don't want to oversee deals. You don't want to negotiate yeah. deals. You just want to sit back and collect your checks, right? But you should under you should be active on understanding who you're lending to and what type of deals they are, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And so, when I bought this house for three hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars, well, I came home with a seventy-five thousand dollar check. That's called excess cash to close, right? Yep. Well, this private lender now now let's say I lost my mind. And I went to the Caribbean, right? And I didn't do a do a, do a deed in lieu, uh, you know, of foreclosure. And so my lender has got to foreclose on me because okay. I've like skipped town or whatever. Yeah. Well, look at, look at, so of course they don't want to mess with it. Look yeah. how they're protected. Because one question that comes to mind is, look, what if you skip town and take that $75,000 and you don't rehab the house? Yeah. Yeah. Good question. So, how is the lender protected? That's why we do the conservative loan to value. This lender would get a property that they loaned $400,000 on and the after repair value is 550. There's still $150,000 spread yeah. and wanted to, I mean, they could sell the house as is and not even touch it. I mean, good for goodness sakes, you put that house on the market at $400,000 
in the multiple listeners, it just flew off the shelf because, you know, there's 150 spread between what was blown yep. and, you know, what it would be worth if it was fixed up with the 50 or 50,000 in, in rehab. So that's the question. How am I protected as a lender, as a private lender? Yep. Well, we name our, I'm just we name our private lenders on the more on the insurance policy as a mortgagee, just like a bank. And we name them on the title policy as an assured. Um, again, how they protected that conservative loan to value. And we're not borrowing unsecured money. They're going to get their own promissory note, their own debt of trust, uh, collateralizing that note. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. So um, again, even when you find somebody that has experience in this business, you still need to understand how you can protect yourself and do that. And what, like Jay, typically how long are lenders lending their money out between that period and getting it back about how yeah. long or, you know, what's the, what's the, um, you know, what's the typical loan yeah, duration? The length, say? the length of it is two years, even two years. I'm probably not, I'm probably not going to use it for two years. Um, so we do the notes for two years and what I have with, uh, with my 47 private lenders, yeah. when I go to cash out, which typically like in this market, I may buy like this house that I bought house may sit there for two or three months before the, one of my contractors can get to it. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, rehab may take three months once the rehab starts. So now we're already into it for six months. Uh, you put it on the market maybe it's another 45 days. So typically we're going to in that maybe nine month period, yeah. uh, to cash out type yeah. of thing. Um, so that's, that's what, that's what the length is. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. So you're, you're, but you're baking in. So on both sides, so you're baking in for the lender, they're getting equity baked in. They've got, they have their protections, but you're also baking in additional time. So if your contractor can't get to it, if it sits on the market for a little bit longer period of time, if it takes longer to sell, for instance, um, and you still have that, that time and that leeway. So if, yeah, if you want to, if you want to get into this, you should certainly understand all these things. Um, Jay, I want to get in, you have, you have a terrific website. I was checking it out before, um, you know, before, uh, we, we booked you on the show and, um, you're also a two-time national bestseller. Um, so you got a few things for the audience, you know, whether you want to learn about this, whether you want to, um, dive in a little deeper, share a little bit about the resources that our listeners can find on your website. Sure. So I've got three, gifts, uh, for your audience, Chris, first awesome. of all, is my book, which is called where to get the money now, where to get the money now. And, uh, you know, the U S postal service is actually still in business. You can't download this book. Uh, <laughs> we're actually going to priority mail it to you. I'll autograph it. This book uh, is an easy read. I walk you through step by step exactly how I raised that $2 million in less than 90 days and how I still now with no chasing, begging, selling, or persuading. It's all about sharing. Also in the book, if you don't have a large network, Chris, I think most of your audience does have a large network, but if you don't have a large network, I actually teach uh, other real estate investors how to grow your network very, very quickly. Well, you can get this book. Uh, we'll ship it to you at J Connor and I'm an ER, not an OR. So www.jyconner.com forward slash book. That's J Connor, J A Y C O N N E R.com forward slash book. And we'll have that right here in the show notes if you're listening. Um, also, you can check out uh, your your podcast show notes as well if, if you're not watching here on YouTube. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, Raising Private Money uh, is the name of my uh, podcast. Easy to find. And then thirdly, I got a $3,000 gift for your audience as well, Chris. Ooh. I put on what's called the Private Money Academy Conference live event three times a year right here in Atlantic Bay, North Carolina. And uh, during right. February, June, and October, and uh, this is a three thousand dollar event for two people. For your audience, Chris, uh, only a ninety seven dollar registration fee. And here's you can check out the website and yeah. see what we do at this event. Uh, yeah. Obviously, to do about private money, but that website uh, where you can get the uh, small registration fee is www jaysliveevent.com. J a y s L I V E E V E N T.com Jay's live event.com. Outstanding. And we are going to make sure that we have all these, the, the book link, the podcast link, 
and the special offer that you just offered here, Jay, for the live event all down here in the show notes. I got it all recorded here. Um, so I know you've already said it, but what's the best way for people to get in touch with you and learn more? Um, is it going to your website, jayconner.com? You just go to jayconner.com, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com. And right there on the home page, I've got a free master class that's four or five minutes that summarizes uh, the steps of raising the private money. I love it, Jay. Um, listeners of the show know that we are passionate about helping you achieve financial independence. And we are passionate about bringing people like you, Jay, onto the show to share you know, their knowledge, their resources, and you've been very generous with those today. So thank you so much for sharing not only your story, but also all these resources with the audience today. Chris, thank you so much for having me on. God bless you. God bless you as well. And hopefully we get to connect next time you're up here in beautiful Asheville. I'm looking forward to it. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconner.com slash money guide. That's jconner.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconner.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.